Today in Blender, we're going to be looking at the units and the unit scale and understanding how this unit scale works with your models that you're creating. We're also going to be learning how to snap to this grid and how the scale factor has its effect on the gridding and your project as a whole. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ. 3D Studio. So that's venture into the unit scale, the zoom factor and snapping. I'm going to first click on the cube, right click and delete. Now at the moment, if I come up to my scene, this little tab here, scene properties and look at the units, I've got mine set to metric and I set my unit scale to 0.001. And if we look down, we've got the length set to millimeters as well. It's up to you what system you set these to. The concept is still the same. If I bring this out, so I'm increasing that scale, you can see that if you look at the scene, it looks like I'm zooming out, but I'm just changing the scale of that scene. This becomes more obvious when we click on one of these axes. So if I click on the Z, if we look at the top left, you can see we've got meters times 0.001. So if I increase this, the minimum is shown on the right. So if we bring this right down, 0.001. So this is more precise compared to something like this, which is in kilometers. So we wouldn't model a grain of rice at something that's metric in millimeters with a unit scale of 2.5, we would actually bring this right down to the lower unit scale and even change the length from millimeters to micromillimeters. As we zoom, so if I zoomed, clicked on the scene and zoomed out, this will change as well. And zoom in, you can see we start zooming into millimeters so I'm going to come back out and you can see this is changing here. I'm going to swap back length of millimeters. And this is at its lowest. So I'm see dragging to the left and we've got the 0.001. And now I'm going to come up to the add mesh and add a plane. So you can see I've added a plane, but I'm zoomed in too much. So I've got 10 centimeters times 0.001. So let's zoom out so it's more in view. So we've got this in view here. Now notice the grid in. We have got the individual segments. So there are 10 individual segments and then a bolder segment. This value here tells us the amount that we can move, resize and manipulate this object with the snapping. So at the moment, my snapping, I haven't got absolute grid snap on as of yet. We'll come back to this in a moment. If I click on the object, hit G for grab and X to lock it to the X axis. If you look to the top left, you see the D, which is for distance, has a value of zero. If I move to the right, then that starts to increase. If I bring this back and hold down the control on the keyboard, by the way, when I hit X, I only just press that on the keyboard and now holding down the key, the control key. If I move this to the right, you can see we're moving in 0 0.1 of a millimeter increments. So if we look at the scaling at the top, the 10 centimeters times 0 0.001, if we do that calculation, we'll get to 0 0.1 of a millimeter. As said, you can see we're moving in 0 0.1 of a millimeter increments until we get to the bold line. So now we've moved one millimeter. If I click that accepts that, but you can see this point is actually off because if I try to grab and move that again along the X axis, if I started here and hold down the control, then that actually snaps to where, wherever we are and it moves in that increment. Now, if I wanted to snap this exactly to this grid, then we come up to this snapping here and use the absolute grid snap. 
And now when I move this, hit G on the keyboard, then hit X, hold down control, and I move this, and you can see when I get to the bold line, this line that runs this way, it's exact. So I can move that onto that point there, that center point. So that's just move this freely. I've taken my finger off control and I'm going to stop. If I hit control now, you can see that it nudges slightly. Let's pull this out a bit and you can see how that's nudging. It's snapping to the grid along these individual guidelines. Let's just drop that there. One other thing to remember is that if we're changing the scaling, if we use the flyout bar and click on item at the top, look at the dimensions. This is the dimension of this object. When we change anything like length, say kilometers, this dimension changes. So this is now a representation of that size in kilometers. Let's put this back to centimeters. 0.2 and millimeters is going to be two. But when we change the unit scale, the unit scale is increased and the dimensions are increased as well. So this is when we're talking about if we're working at a smaller scale and we change the length to micromillimeters, then we can use micromillimeters for our scaling. So we have to be careful with this, not to mix the scales when we're creating individual objects, because it has an effect on all the objects in the scene. So if I bring this up now and create an object in here, let's create another mesh, add mesh and plane, and we're going to hit G for grab X and move it to this way. You can see that this object is one, three, five, six millimeters. And we drop the scale down 0 0.01 and add mesh plane. G to move X and move this to the right. This is two millimeters now. So you can see they've all been changed to this dimension depending on this unit scale. When you're first starting your project, be aware of the scale that you want to use. If you're modeling a grain of rice, then you wouldn't be working in a larger scale. We'll drop this right down and select the units accordingly. If I was working in something like 3D printing, then I would just drop this down and use millimeters. It's all about precision. Also remember when we zoom in and out, you see that these change as well. And our grid will change and you'll see we're now going to move this. I can click one of them. Hit G and X, hold down control. We are moving and snapping to those guidelines at that scale. So I hope that's helped you with understanding scaling and how to use that scaling in your project. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again in the new one. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash mj3dstudio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.